Hi, this is Marty from Drip Depot, and today I have Ed from Iritech USA. Ed, thanks for coming by today. My pleasure. And today we're going to talk about filters. We've had a lot of customers uh, that have dirty water or canal water for their irrigation. Could be small farms, even residential. And filtration is becoming more of an issue. So Ed is the filter expert, and he's going to tell us the differences about what each type of filter, the situations they might work, and why you might want to choose a different type of filter for your situation. If you do have some dirty water, it's gonna, a small filter like this is gonna plug up extremely fast. And so what we're trying to do here today is, is we wanna talk about surface area of these filters. And surface area is what is gonna dictate how much the length of your runtime that you have. Okay, so let's look at this in the mass side of it. This is a normal filter you would see in a yard. It's a one inch filter. This screen surface area right here is 16 square inches. Okay, the next size filter up you'll see in a yard is an inch and a half filter, okay? This is the internal screen for it. We have a disc here, but it's the same size if it was a screen. And this surface area is 70 square inches, okay? On our big THF filter here from Airtech, we'll open this thing up for you. Oop. This screen surface area is 197 square inches. So when you're looking at filtration and you're trying to extend your runtime, your runtime is extended by the size of the surface area on your filter. So this, is, this would be if somebody's having clogging issues with something like this and they'd want to go up to a bigger size. Correct. And what kind of runtimes if they had to figure out how long it would go, is there any way to figure that out? Yeah, um, your surface area is going to help you with that. So if I have a runtime of two days with this and this is 16 square inches and I go up to 197 square inches here, my runtime is going to be the same math, the 16 into the 197. So it's going to be about 12 times to 11 times the runtime. Okay. So if that's at three hours, mm -hmm. or excuse me, if that's at three days, it'll put this thing easily at 30 days. Wow. So Ed, what if I have a homeowner who's on municipal water that's very clean and they don't have any filter problems? Would they need something like this? No, they don't. Okay. No, they're just, they just uh, need a big fat checkbook to pay for that uh, water bill they get every month. <laughs> So who would, this, who would really benefit from this, do you think, the most? Anybody that's on irrigation water. Um, just because you don't see canals in your neighborhood doesn't mean that you don't have that dirty irrigation water. Most of the big canals will bring the water to a, to a subdivision, and then from that subdivision, they'll put it in a pump, and they'll pipe it underground to pipes to everybody's yard. You'll have your irrigation turn on and turn off in your yard. Um, uh, what we find across the United States is in all these big developments, they do not want to filter the water at the pump station. They want to push that problem onto the homeowner. And what about filtration? Does it affect any? I know you have a valve here and you have some sprinklers. Does it affect these, uh, the filtration? Absolutely. Um, the, the biggest, the number one way people normally try to take care of a filter problem they have is they try to go get a different internal screen and that screen is, is, is uh, open more. It has bigger openings in it. And that increases the runtime, they think. It may be increased the runtime, but what it does is it allows uh, bigger particles of debris to go downstream, okay? And what happens then is it starts messing with our sprinklers, with our gear drives. It'll start messing with our spray heads, plugging our spray heads up. Everybody has seen when their spray head's plugged up. They've looked at their little 180 degree pattern when it's perfect and it looks like a little beautiful fan. And then all of a sudden they'll see sections of the fan not spraying out. That just means the debris is stuck in that nozzle, in the side profile of that nozzle. The biggest culprit of changing out a filter and going to bigger screen size to help your runtime happens in your electrical valves. So our electrical valves are the heart and soul of our automated system. And what happens here with our electrical valves is, is the way these things operate is they operate through a turbulent fl flow path, okay? And so right here, mm -hmm. it diverts water from one side of the bonnet through this little spaghetti tube to this other little tiny thing. Mm -hmm. As that starts to get debris in it, that starts to plug up. And then if you've ever seen your valve start to close real slow and take forever to close, five, 10 minutes, or they take forever to open up, or they just won't shut down completely at all, it's because that turbulent flow path has got debris inside of it, okay? And a lot of times it's happened because the water wasn't filtered fine enough to, to have the operation mode of the filter work correctly. So what if I have a system that is a hybrid? I have a landscape with some drip irrigation uh, mixed in. What's, what mesh do I need and when should I choose a different size mesh? Okay, so we talked about um, this is a minimum of 80 mesh between the spray heads and the gear drives and you have a minimum of 50 mesh for this. Okay. So in this instance, you would have to filter to what the heads need. They need 80 mesh, so it would be a minimum of 80 mesh. Okay. If you have drip 
on that system also, as you said, you would, you would have to buy the internal cartridge, would have to filter to your smallest orifice size in the field. In this case, it would be your drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. So you'd probably end up buying an internal battery that's 120 mesh filtration, mm -hmm. and then everything would get 120 mesh clean water. And why, I see you have two pressure valves, it looks like here. Why do you have two pressure valves? Okay, so we have two um, pressure gauges on this because since it is a larger filter and it's a little bit more um, uh, time to clean than let's say one of the smaller ones, these pressure gauges become your friend because mm -hmm. I have a pressure gauge on the outlet of the filter and I have a pressure gauge on the inlet of the filter. Mm -hmm. These pressure gauges tell me exactly how dirty my internal uh, filter is mm -hmm. because if my pressure coming in is at 50 pounds mm -hmm. and my pressure going out is at 40, mm -hmm. I have 10 pounds lost. That tells me I'm starting to cake up my filter. So when, when should we clean the filter then? Okay, so because of the pressure gauges, um, usually it's about a 10% difference is the rule of thumb. So if I have, you know, 50, between 10 and 15%. So if I have 50 pounds coming in and I have 40 pounds going out, I've lost about 20%. So that tells me I'm actually above that 15% threshold. That tells me my filter screen is getting very, very dirty. So it, it just lets you know absolutely when to break this clasp open and pull this thing apart. There is no guessing in so it at all. as far as, now you have this, it looks like uh, mounted upside down. Correct. And so is this filter able to be mounted right side up also or any configuration? Yes, it is. It's, it's being able to be mounted upside down and right side up. Um, the configuration of it being the other way would be turned down and you would come out the side and this side right here. Mm -hmm. We put it in this application because this is, uh, uh, we're trying to be mindful of the domestic homeowners. Mm -hmm. And so w usually on a filter of this size where it's two inch coming in and coming out, mm -hmm. if it's on a domestic system, there's a very good chance it's only a one inch pipe down here, an inch and a quarter pipe, both on the entry and the exit side. So we put it in what we call our inverted mode because we wanted all the weight of the filter to be straight down on the pipes. Okay, to give it the stability and all that. So when they pull their canister off or just the sheer weight of all the water in the canister itself, this is where it's its strongest. Okay, so the homeowner's gonna be able to grab at it and move it around a little bit. And in the inverted mode like this, it's gonna have all of its weight straight down. If, on it. if it's directly up and down like this, everything I can do with my hands, I can push everything down. So it makes life a lot easier. So I can come up to it like this. I can push this down, it stays. I can take my dome. I can push my dome straight down click it in there good if it was spun around the other way I'd be down below trying to push the dome up trying to seat it in it's just so much easier to come at it from the top and go like this and then we obviously put our clasp on the reason why we were able to do this is we've come out of the side of our filter mm -hmm. with our with our um, discharge valve and this will allow us to open this valve like this and drain everything out of this before we clean it. Okay. So when we break this thing open, you would think it would bleed a lot of water on you. Mm -hmm. It won't because we've taken the entire canister of water mm -hmm. out through here. Nice.